Uh, looking forward to getting to work on Missouri today. Uh, I know our guys are excited to keep getting better, and that's really the message for this group is um, we got to continue to improve in a lot of areas, uh, a lot of things to clean up from the tape Saturday, special teams included. But in all three phases, that'll be the goal today to keep moving forward, getting more depth, trying to prepare our guys uh, to get better for this game this weekend. Yeah, Kirby, um, just, you know, winning the East Saturday night, you know, can reflect it's, it's four East titles in five years now. Just can you take a moment to, you know, look at where this program is at this point? And I guess, you know, obviously this program is in a good place before you got here. What has it taken to take this program from, I guess, good to great or however you want to fight with that? Um, a lot of hard work, a lot of great support from our fan base and our administration and a lot of recruiting. You know, it's it's uh, the expectation is to to win the East, go play for an SEC championship. I think it's the greatest conference uh, in the country in terms of competitive uh, nature and the recruiting battles are really tough and really proud of our guys, the work they've done. But um, obviously that's not our our goal and it's not where we want to be we're not where we need to be so we're focused on getting better for missouri and how can we get better at these areas we need to improve in because everybody knows that humility is a week away and uh, they got a good program i think eli's doing a good job and uh, the biggest thing is how we get better but i'm certainly proud of what we've been able to do and accomplish <clears throat> Coach, I, I saw some pretty impressive uh, analytics on Darion Kendrick. I can't validate what they are, but just at how well he quantifying how well it looks like he's he's playing. Can you comment on him specifically? What's what he's done for the defense this year, and do you think at some point we'll get a chance to visit with young Mr. Kendrick? Uh, I'm not sure about that, but I don't know what analytics should be going by because what I found is if you're I don't know are you referencing PFF or what are you referencing? Source. Yeah, the, the, the ultimate source of it. Is but what? It was like no, you know, uh, several people use no touchdowns, uh, percentage of completion. I think those things are a joke really personally because when we go talk to NFL scouts, they, they laugh at PFF or what whatever the source may be to get it. What they do is they use them to pull up to evaluate guys. But a lot of times PFF is a guy that works as another job during the day. And uh, that's just his secondary job to chart whether or not DK or Nicobe Dean or Trevon Walker or uh, Warren McClendon Jamari Saylor did their job, and their evaluation is probably not as important as ours. Now, with all that said, I'm very pleased with what DK is doing, but I'm not going to base it on what a statistician says. You know, I think I think I think statistics are for making decisions on whether you go for it or whether you don't, or whether you do this or do this, but not evaluation of players. I'm going to reserve that to the people within our building that have laid eyes on people for a long time. And DK is doing a really nice job. He's doing a phenomenal job of uh, practice, taking notes, understanding the importance. You got to understand, DK came in with a a foundation similar to what a, a, a senior would be for us, right? He played in really good defense played in a scheme-diverse defense under Coach Venables. Uh, I've been thoroughly impressed with how he handles practice, walkthrough. He is a consummate, dedicated senior to getting the little things right. And when you correct him, he handles it really well. So the, everything that those guys said about him over there at Clemson, that he's very coachable, he wants to do it right, all those things have, uh, have been true. So I'm very pleased with that. Can he get better on the field? Absolutely. Um, and he's been protected by a really good rush as well. And he's had some chances to make plays, and he's made some, and then some other ones he wishes he'd have back. But he gets to go against really good wideouts every day in practice. So I'm pleased with uh, what he's doing, but not by way of anything out there that's evaluating people outside of our coaches. Yes, hey, Kirby, um, is, is Stetson Bennett's running ability a, kind of a separator when you guys have decisions to make about which quarterback to use when, when JT's healthy enough to play? Yeah, it's it's – a separator, but I mean, there's things JT's better at than, than Stetson. But it's it's one of the things that's a factor. I mean, the mobility in a quarterback, guys, is is critical. And it's not that JT's immobile. It's not. There's nothing there that says, oh, JT. It's, it's Stetson is. Stetson's very mobile. Stetson's been able to make some plays with his feet. I thought there were, I don't know, five or six plays um, in the game that uh, were 
where his mobility was a factor. We had breakdowns, and you're going to have some on offense. And when you have those, you got to have somebody that can, you know, I guess get you out of a bad play. And I don't mean by way of check. I mean during the play. And uh, he does a good job doing that. Kirby, how do you feel about uh, explosive plays with the offense? And it seems like gradually, year by year, they are getting better. And even week by week this year, they're getting better. And why is that important? Well, explosive play is the number one trait to scoring points, in my opinion. I mean, it's probably the number one characteristic of teams that win games is how explosive you are, especially in today's day and age. So being able to be explosive is really important. We work really hard on it. Um, haven't probably been as explosive as we want to be in the run game, but the run game we have had has set up the play action, and uh, a lot of those explosive plays have come off play action. So I'm very pleased with where that is, and, you know, I – is, it's not necessarily fair all the time, too, to our offense because there's a lot of games we're not trying to score. You know, we got we got other guys in, so we've had some games where those guys didn't get an opportunity to score at will, to be explosive the whole game. Uh, when they've had to do things, they've done a good job of doing that, and I think that's important. Um, but it's hard to measure us against a team that might have been in five or six or seven really close games because they they might be playing it different. Coach, after the, the game the other day, we were talking to the Nolan Smith on the Zoom and kind of a, had an impromptu, came in on with uh, those defensive stats. And I mean, some of the criticism, I guess, he feels he, he's taking. Is that the uh, way he feels? Is that kind of an indicative, I guess, of the way that, uh, I guess, his teammates know, feel about stat and just uh, kind of what does that speak to as far as how, what they think about him as a young man and everything? I think mean, that's just Nolan's personality. Nolan is a very prideful, uh, his personality is. A uh, very strong personality. He's uh, he's 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 very talkative at practice and uh, in flex and in leadership mode. And I love it. I love his energy. He comes every day to practice and he conveys the message that you won't drive it home. Whether it's physical toughness, effort, he's trying to make sure that everybody's pulling in that same direction. So I think you know I, I don't know exactly what he said, but I'm sure it's, for him it's it's in defense of his teammate, but I don't know that it's just because it's Stetson. He would feel that way, whoever was out there. He believes in whoever's out there, just like the rest of the team does. I understand Adam Anderson had a huge club on his hand. Can you tell us what was up with him that, uh, at the game this past Saturday? Yeah, he's got a, a UCL, a, a finger sprain deal that's bothering him and uh, felt it would he would be more effective in a club than in a cast. And we'd love for him to have a grip, but he didn't feel like he would have grip. and. A lot of times when you have the club, you actually can play without worrying about it. So the concern wasn't there of it hurting or hurting it. It was protected, but it makes it a little less uh, effective in terms of grabbing cloth and wrapping up. You opened uh, talking about the need to improve in a lot of areas as the season has progressed. Have you been um, uh, happy with the way the, the players have responded to that message? I would think that it might it might be a more difficult message to, to impress upon them as the winds have mounted. No, I, I, they've been tremendous. They, 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 they take the Mondays as, as give me my medicine, you know, like, well, what do I got to get better at? So, you know, what, what's the, what's the talk, talk to this coach. What, what can we get better at? Where, where do we go from here? Because they understand that we're not where we need to be. And that's been a consistent theme around here for, for five, six years. That's not like all of a sudden magical this year that we just try to get better after games, regardless of the outcome of the game, there's things you have to work on and get better at. And there's millions of things you guys don't see and don't aren't privy to during the game and on the tape that coaches watch that are mistakes. I mean, we had five, six busted coverages, but yet all they hear on TV is how coordinated the coverage is. Well, that's not necessarily true. And you guys don't necessarily know that, and you wouldn't. But our guys do, and that's what Monday's about, making sure we can clean that up. Same thing on the offensive line. If if a guy moves and we miss a double team and nobody sees it and they think it's somebody else's fault, we're trying to clean those things up. We want to play cleaner on both sides of the ball, and that's that's what practice is for. Coach, uh, Florida ran a couple trick plays, the halfback <clears throat> pass and the double pass, and you guys were able to – them. Uh, do you do anything in particular to make sure you're ready for those and you can stay disciplined on those plays? It's just that disciplined. I mean, you can't predict trick plays. You can't. You practice trick plays, but you never practice the right ones. So it just doesn't work that way because there's infinite numbers of ways to run trick plays, and you really sell doing your job. 
a lot more of it is are your eyes in the right place? Are you looking at what you're supposed to look at? Because most mistakes on defense are done because my eyes aren't where they're supposed to be. They're not where they're trained to be. And if you can get everybody to put their eyes in the right place, then you're going to be more successful. And we're not doing that at any kind of high rate because we have guys that have their eyes in the wrong place. And uh, you can only get away with it more when you've got really good people up front. Hey, Kirby, Kiaris had his best game of the season statistically on Saturday, scores his first touchdown. How big do you think that was from him, especially as he continues to try and get healthier and healthier? Yeah, it was great. It was great to see him make a play one-on-one. Uh, Stetson gave him a hell of an opportunity. It was a great play call. It was something that we had worked all week and thought we had a shot at. And just one of those that pays off in terms of capitalizing on it. And he's working really hard. Um, he always works hard. He's a great leader and very pleased with what Kiaris does for this team. That's it. Um, I was going to ask about Kiaris too, but I'll ask what you said about um, Pat Lesney in terms of, um, you know, have you guys been able to pinpoint some of the inconsistencies with him or is just kind of the nature of a college kicker? Oh, I think he's been he's been fairly consistent in terms of what he's done in practice, and that volume of work to me is much greater than the 15 or 16 kicks you get to see out there. He just hasn't been as effective when we needed him the most. He's also been in some tough situations, uh, different atmosphere in terms of what we're playing in front of. Can't let that affect you. Uh, the other day was tough. I mean, that win was violent. It was affecting both both teams. Probably more on me for putting him out there in that situation. Um, but trust him, and I uh, think he's a really good kicker and not concerned. Hey, Kirby, you guys have had a lot of linebackers that are doing really well in college and now tearing it up in the NFL. What do you think uh, Dan and Glenn specifically do to help develop the linebacker group to have so much success in the NFL that we're seeing? You referencing the outside backers or inside backers or both? Uh, both. Yeah, I think, number one, that credit goes to Dan and Coach Schumann. They both do a tremendous job. One has the outside and one has the inside. But uh, Dan does a good job calling the defenses. Glenn has done a tremendous job developing uh, young linebackers, growing those guys so they can go on to be NFL players. And I think when guys make decisions on where they want to go to school, they want to see what you've done in terms of teaching, developing, growing players. And we've been really fortunate, outside backer and inside backer, to put a lot of guys at the next level. And that's because the defense we play is very similar to what they do in the NFL and because we have good players. I mean, you want big size speed guys. And we've been able to recruit to a certain size speed criteria. And in the NFL, they're constantly looking for backers that can play all three downs, can run. Um, and there's a limited number of those guys. And uh, we've been able to get some and develop some. And I'm really pleased with those guys. Now, we've, we've taken on some injuries at that position that have made it really tough between uh, Tresman and Ryan Davis. So our depth is limited there. Kirby, after the game, you were talking about, you know, you had a discussion with Keely Ringo about, you know, he was getting on another guy for the busted coverage there at the end. How do you balance, you know, one, wanting player-driven leadership and guys holding each other accountable, but two, I guess, having them know that it's ultimately on the coaches to get guys in the right place? Oh, there's no, there's no discrepancy there that's that's i mean it's composure that i'm looking for composure and discipline you know I, I, we got players all the time that get on other players and they do it the right way but there's a right way to do that and there's a time to do that it's not in the middle of the game or the play so it's it's a learning experience and uh he's very bright very intelligent and learns quickly Kirby, in terms of Tyler Beatty, what have you seen from him? He's top five in the country. What is it that he does so well, uh, and, and what do you think the key to stopping him this week is going to be? He's got great vision, uh, ultimate toughness. I feel like he's been there forever. He's a really good receiver out of the backfield, but his ability to run the outside zone play is as good as I've ever seen. They are really good at running that play, and he finds holes that sometimes you think aren't even there. You're like, how did he get through there? and he runs with extreme toughness. You see him break tackles and second-level safety tackles. He's got a great stiff arm, and uh, I mean, he, he runs bigger than he is, and he runs in a really good scheme in terms of outside zone. Hey, Coach, I saw you were quoted in an ESPN article recently about talking about being fortunate on defense to play behind the ball control offenses. Is, is that part of the, the game planning to, to play more ball control? Is it possible to be too explosive and get your defense back on the field too soon? 
No, I would never. I mean, to me, we're trying to score points. We're trying to score points every every possession. Uh, when you talk about ball control offense, ball control offense to me is being able to be explosive. Because in today's day and age, there is no such thing as is is three three yards in a cloud of dust unless you're playing at one of the service academies. Because you're trying to score. You know, you're trying to score. You're trying to be explosive. It's a lot more important to us uh, to be explosive than to just be three or four yards. There's been some games we've had to play a little different because of maybe a defense that was somebody played or maybe our personnel wasn't the same because we only had four wideouts that were effective for a game. But we've had different mentalities, and we win with whatever it is that we have to do to win that game, whatever it calls for. And I think our offensive staff does a great job of uh, coming up with that. Kirby, do you think Zamir is getting more comfortable as the weeks go on, or is it just a situational thing where he's, his, maybe his productivity is just going up for reasons other than further away from the injuries? No, I think he's been really effective. I think, I think he's gotten a few more opportunities because of uh, Kendall and Kenny's injuries. So his opportunity has gone up a little bit more. Um, I think we're running the ball really well. I think uh, our explosive nature of play action has helped him because just like us running the ball makes it easier to be explosive in the pass game, us being explosive in the pass game complements us being able to run the ball better. So he's gotten good opportunities. He's taken advantage of it. And the design of some of the runs in the run game have helped. You know, So I think that's a big piece of it. But I'm, I'm really proud of what uh, Samir's been able to do. He works so hard. I think he feels like he's completely healthy for the first time in terms of uh, breaking tackles and having strength and, uh, and not being dinged mm -hmm. up. Two more questions. Kirby, with, with Dom, Dom Blaylock, I guess it's the hamstring that's been the biggest concern. Is there a timeline or is it tricky with that injury? <laughs> it's tricky with that injury. I mean, it's a hamstring. So they're, they're always tricky. They're frustrating because as a coach, you just, you know, tell me when he's ready. When's he ready? When's he going to be ready, Ron? When's he going to be ready? Well, it doesn't work that way. As long as he... He does what he can. He's strengthening the muscle. He's strengthening himself down there. And he's, he's, he's done everything we've asked. And he's trying to get back. And he's much closer this week than he was last. But it's, it's, a, patient, it's a patient process when it comes to hamstrings. Coach, so uh, Marcus Rose, Jack saying, like having a cramp in or something he had during the game the other day, like when he came off the field? Yeah, he had some cramps. And uh, he was fine.